relying on their limited savings, two Korean immigrants, Monica and Jacob, and their American-born children move from California to a van in rural Arkansas. There, Father Jacob starts growing Korean fruits and vegetables, expecting to sell them to merchants, and Mother Monica dislikes their in-the-middle-of-nowhere new home as she is concerned with their son's heart condition. To maintain their savings, the parents work at the nearest hatchery, and to keep their kids company, they invite Monica's mother Sunja to live with them in their van. Sunja arrives and is determined to grow Minari, a type of Korean celery. The paramount reason why the family can't begin to thrive in their new home is Monica and Jacob's numerous disagreements. Monica is confident that only a life in the big city can help the family, and Jacob can't imagine a better life for them than growing Korean plants to sell them. As the contentions between them increase, both start forcing their life views even more. And right before a climax, this results in their decision to live separately. But can they really understand each other? As someone born in urban Korea, Monica isn't fond of her husband's choice of home. She's also overprotective of her son because of his heart condition and doesn't allow him to run and do other activities interesting to somebody at his age. Hence, Monica is attached to beliefs not allowing her to experiment with life. She is over the moon when Sunja arrives to help with the children because that manifests her perfect image of a family, the united family as if perpetuated in a family photograph where everybody looks happy. Later, Jacob's various difficulties with the farm make Monica even more blunt in her wish to go back to California because the stability, assured by Jacob, looks even less likely. It seems that any next calamity will be the last straw. Soon just suffers a stroke and Monica's decision becomes final. She, the kids and her mother will go to California with or without Jacob. This subtly denotes that her marriage and Jacob's financial stability promise aren't factors Monica deeply cares about. But after seeing the climax, we know that's not true. When she spots the burning barn and Jacob rushing in it, her urge isn't to protect her children or her mother as she might have thought. She rushes in the barn too, to save Jacob's produce. Or to put it relatively to the previous point, she chooses to be with her husband, helping him keep his promise. What about Jacob? Throughout the film, he remains optimistic that his farm will help them reach financial stability. He says there are 30,000 Korean immigrants coming to the US each year, so it's obvious his business idea will be profitable. And he insists that the idea should be developed in his way. He declines the services of a water dowser who, through divination, locates groundwater, and Jacob digs a well on his own because he doesn't want to pay, as he asserts, for a stupid stick locating water when he just has to use his mind. He is also against his co-worker Paul's overly religious rituals because Paul seems like somebody who doesn't use his mind, but someone who's actually out of it, according to Jacob. However, Jacob's well runs dry and he is urged to pay for county water. This is the first sign that maybe his way isn't optimal. Eventually, though, Jacob reaches an agreement with the vendor, which proves to him the success of his plans. So, during a conversation with Monica, he says that he has to build a successful farm no matter what, which subtly indicates that his family and marriage aren't the most essential parts of his life. But we know that's not really true, because during the fire, Jacob stops trying to save his produce and screams, Honey, honey, which is the first time in the film he addresses his wife in a loving manner. He finds her and embraced, they leave the inflamed barn, ignoring the burning produce. And then Jacob abandons his way to be with his family. Earlier in the film, both characters declared they're completely against each other's life view, but actually they care about it. Despite her protectiveness of her family, Monica rushes into the fire to save Jacob's produce. And Jacob, despite his financially heavy mindset, remembers that Monica is actually the honey of his life and the exact way of sustaining their family is a negligible detail. Jacob wanted to force his worldview, that is, I'm going to grow the farm and the family my way. And Monica wanted to force her one, I want to move back to the big city because there I feel I can take care of my family the best. But the climax proves they're both wrong because they understand each other fundamentally. They don't move to the big city as Monica wishes and they don't grow the farm and the family as Jacob wishes. They learn that in order to be fruitful, a family and its internal understanding should arise naturally because forcing one's view of life is counterproductive, like the Minari plant that grows well on its own. 
the film's climax is easily the most tear-inducing scene during 2021's Oscar season. Not only because the family loses everything embodying financial stability, but because it actually unifies them. After the fire, the only thing that remains is the genuine family spirit. Like a phoenix, Monica and Jacob's understanding arises from the ashes and their home is reborn. It's a happy ending, masked as an irreversible tragedy. Because of this beautiful paradox, I smile brightly with sorrowful eyes. Are we happy? Yes, I'm happy. <laughs>